but it's a universe that keeps building upon itself, which makes the lore that much deeper, which makes the reflection to real human history and mythology and storytelling craft that much deeper and effective. Yeah. Um, which is, you know, why you see like, well, I mean, my, you know, my idea, it's like why it's the root of so much other uh, science fiction out there and now becoming part of the mainstream and a mythology that seems um, impossible to fully grasp ever, I think is also quite exciting and fun. Welcome to Chicago Reacts. Today we are going to be reacting to every uh, Warhammer, every single Warhammer 40K Faction Explained Part 2, Part 3. If you like this video, uh, be sure to check out more of what we got going on. And with that being said, the orcs. Every spring's gone red! That means I'm super fast! <laughs> orcs, 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 orcs. <laughs> He's very pumped. I fucking love orcs. <laughs> so, yes, the, the green monsters, the green tie, the green skins. These orcs, they are in fact a race in 40k. Okay. The orcs are as exactly what you expect them. They have archaic weapons, they're big boys, they have axes, and they have got big old teeth, and they want to kill everything, and there are so many of them. You're so physically strong. The only than reason they haven't taken over the entire galaxy is they can't, can't stop murdering each other. Ooh. Orcs are so cool. Orcs don't have philosophy. Orcs don't have existential Pirate crisis. Have what philosophy matters is who's opinion. the biggest orc. You listen to that guy, because he the biggest orc. He big orc. <laughs> big orc knows best. You win through the power of imagination. Of all the races I have battled throughout the galaxy, the orc is the hardest to comprehend. They wage war with machines that should not work, care little for strategic gains, and are just as likely to slaughter each other as the enemy. How does one battle an enemy that defies all logic? Sounds awesome. As an orc, you're, you're enjoying life. That yeah. sounds right. Like I was going to the say, they seem happy. Having. Your whole life and job and purpose is to get up and beat each other to death because you can. The biggest orc is the man who strong. understands everything. He is the boss. And orcs have this really weird, like, big, dumb, stereotype British accent, hmm. which is just hilarious Great. to me. Those That's are classes. orcs. You're, you fight. Duh, you like to fight. Old. Your whole purpose is to fight. You wage war because you want to wage Oy. war. You got your boss over I, there. And you better listen to the boss because if you don't listen small, to the boss, the boss will squish you and make back. you examples yeah. for the other orcs. And then you can't fight because orc longer. dead. And orc dead is orc dead can't fight because the orc dead. Orcs. They scrap together machines out of parts that don't make any sense. And because yeah, they believe, they have shit. the mental imagination that that machine will run, it'll run. Whoa. If that machine's out of gas, you're driving that machine with your fellow orcs, and the biggest orc is behind the wheel, and you run out of gas, some orc behind you is like, oh, oh, Zog, we're out of gas. And the big orc is like, no, we're not. I filled the fucking gas tank up earlier. And all the other orcs are like, oh, yeah, I, you did do that. And then you turn the, the fucking mech back on and it works again. Wow. Does it have gas? Neat. Probably not, <laughs> but it works. Whoa. The power of imagination. Okay. They paint things red because it makes them think that goes faster. They paint things purple because yeah. it's the sneakiest color. say this color. is uh, based on yeah, white colonial fear of magic and stronger tribes. So. Also, also kind of like cool the way it's manifested. It's neat. They're back in the Eldari oh. time frame. But that, back then they were called Quirks and they were much larger and scarier and far more intelligent. It now is. they're just orcs and they're big, dumb, and they smack things. Hmm. But they're pretty spooky. Hmm. They're not spooky. very well armored, but they hit really hard. Okay. And it's called the Green Tide because there are so many orcs. I mean, I guess there are about like as many orcs as there that's are Tyranids. Maybe more. I'm just saying there's a lot of spooky stuff on, out know, there. But it's, that's messed other, up. So there's some humans that issue. just deal orcs with orcs. Are entirely comic relief. <laughs> Their stuff is slapped together. That makes no sense. Their vehicles don't work the way they're supposed to, but they work hmm. because they think it works, because they imagine that it works. I feel like this is orcs how colonists viewed Russia. Who is the biggest orc, and they will follow the biggest orc. And then if they want to be the biggest orc, they'll challenge the biggest orc. And then when they go and they issue a wa, a wa is just war in orc, they murder everybody and everything in this giant tide of green orcs <laughs> who are just excited to be hitting something. They don't care that they're hitting Eldar or the Imperium or Tau or anyone in between. They're just so they get to beat shit up. Nice. Huh. That's orc. And on the tabletop, they are a total coin flip, and they're really fun. I have never met a salty orc. 
player. <laughs> I have never met someone who plays orcs and is ever just a bad guy or that guy. Orc players have this kind of fun to them because when you play them, you are completely submitting yourself to RNG. So here's the thing. RNG. Guardsmen, Imperial Guardsmen, when they shoot, they roll a dice, and on a four up, they'll hit their target. Nice. They have a 50% chance. Mm. Space Marines, pretty good. They hit on a three or higher because okay. they're well-trained. Adeptus Custodians, they hit on twos because they're just super well-trained. Mm. Orcs, they hit on a five or higher. But if they roll a six, they get to make another shot with anything from the dinkiest pistol to the biggest rocket launcher. Oh, it doesn't yeah. matter. Half of their stuff will blow up on a whim. <laughs> one of their medics, if you roll a one to heal someone, you fuck up your surgery and you just kill an orc. Oh, dear. They're so wacky and silly. <laughs> That's kind of, okay, is, that's really, roll well. I, really you cool roll high and said. you keep I like this high, more than the you clowns. You are going to crush I people. And if you don't, don't know you yet. lose. <laughs> I mean, that's what get, you get when you play orcs. That's what happens when you play orc. It's a coin flip, yeah. which is why you can't be a salty bitch when you play orcs <laughs> because things won't go your way. Okay. It's just just okay. roll the dice. Go to all war with the game. army you have. But if you're gonna have fun and you want to be stupid and you want to be I understand. silly, I think I understand why uh, why Daniel orcs. says that. I would but on the be opposite side of the fun them. part in of the this, tabletop sense, the I really I really enjoy <laughs> orcs. Oh dear, necrons. <laughs> The Necrons are spooky, scary skeletons and very grimdark again. Tight. They have a much more fleshed out lore than before. Back in the day, they were just undead Egyptian space terminators, mm. and they still look that way, but now they actually have a story. Mm. So way back in the day, you had the Necron tier. Kind of see a theme here, Eldari, Eldar, Krork, Orc, Necron, Necron tier. So the Necron tier were this race of generally kind of shitty, mm people. <laughs> Not because they were personally shitty, but because their lives were awful. They were ill-fated to a horrible existence of like radiation and a terrible planet God they lived on them. and everything just really Lark sucked. Being a Necron tier was just really depressing. They really were looking for immortality. Hmm. They were extremely reliant on the hope that they would eventually find the key to living forever and just stave off this horrible nature that they were thrust upon them. Their lives are so bad they that they aspire to hope for like something way greater than what they And they, they found got. this group. Yeah. They're called the Old Ones. Imagine Salty. them kind of like the Forerunners in Halo or the Zelnaga in StarCraft, right? Yeah, Zelnaga. These old ones were these sp strong, oh, pretty much omnipotent beings. Mm. And they, of course, knew the key to immortality. So the Necrons went to them and said, please, show us your ways. And the old ones said, no. piss off. Yeah. Not really. They were a lot more humble about it. But they did not want to share their secret of immortality of with the Necrons. The Necrons, of course, took this very well. Mm. Mm and waged war with them, okay. yeah, kind yeah. of under this united banner. Very civil. The Necron different dynasties didn't really like each other, mm. but under this one man, Eagle the Silent King, he thought the best way to unite his race was to do this giant war with the Old Ones out of spite for them keeping the secret of immortality to them. Yeah, this saying. was known as the War in Heaven, mm. and this is actually like a multi-stage war. Because during this war in heaven, they discovered the star gods, a whole new race of people known as the Catan or the Catan. These star gods were also very much like old ones, almost omnipotent beings, and they too had the key to immortality. Okay. And so the Necrons went to them and said, Hey, they can you help us for me? fight off the old ones? Can you help us kill these old ones? You, the Catan. And the Catan said, Yes. And in fact, we can help provide you with the immortality you so desperately okay. seek. So the Catan's silent king kind of, of the Necrons he's like, decided he's like, to make yeah. a pact with the Catan to allow them to accept this generous gift of immortality mm. upon them. Ooh. But this, of course, had been a horrendous trap. Yeah. And the Necrons were dragged in chains oh. to this biotransference where their flesh was stripped from them, replaced with nothing but a metal hollow shell as their souls were ripped from their body and fed to the Catan. And the Catan fattened up. They got chonk course, on yeah. the souls of the Necrons. As this was their plan all along, they consumed the flesh and souls of the Necron tier and turned them all into unwilling robotic slaves, 
just to serve their will. And then with their newfounded Necron army, they pointed their guns at the old ones and the Catan continued their domination of the stars and their genocide, complete and full genocide of these old ones. Wow. The old ones did their best to stave it off. They even created other races, the Eldari and the Orcs, to try to fight yeah. off the wow. horrifying Necron yeah. army and the Catan above them. But there was absolutely no possible chance for them. And the old ones were absolutely extinguished across the galaxy. Ooh. Their entire race completely removed. Full on, 100% genocide. Oh, yes. However, during all this, the Catan, so the just infatuated with their victory, started fighting each other for fun, of for course. sport, and for course, small yes, differences. Do. Doesn't matter. Like the Catan, with these over overpowered like, people, they're going to eventually hit each other. Yeah, of course. Point. It's like we're, and as they we're began just bitch, menially me. fighting <laughs> like they, each other, yeah. the Eldari and the Orcs actually started pushing on the Catan's borders a little bit, mm -hmm. giving them a little bit of a run for their money. And as Catans. this continued, this is when the silent king who retained his consciousness decided to leap into action and start a full scale revolt against their Catan cool. masters. And this Neat. revolt cool. was bloody cool. as the entire Necron army was surged off to destroy these star gods. Yeah. They were able to, just after suffering horrendous losses, were able to turn the tide of the war. Nice. And they took these Katam and they blasted them. Because as these star gods are unkillable, they were able to break them into thousands of shards mm. and entrap them in giant stasis vaults Yikes. to now actually be slaves to the Necrons. Oh, dear. Yeah. Yeah. The Turned Necrons having like the entirety yeah, like of Power their to the workers. gods enslaved to them. They realized that soon their race was about to be attacked by the overcoming new races, the Eldari and the Krorks. And so what they did is they retreated into what about giant the, the stasis bugs and the chaos in order dudes. to preserve their energy and their strength for when one day they would be reawakened and they would be able to rule the galaxy that was rightfully theirs. Okay, well, and then you know, some dingus, galaxy, guys, Adeptus so Mechanicus guy, diddled with a green console. And now the Necrons are back oh. and they see all these primitive races okay. on their that's, lawns that's, okay. and they think testicle. get the fuck off of it yeah the necrons are back super ready for the arcs yeah. and they are here to reclaim the galaxy that they so rightfully believe is theirs now that tabletop they're a lot like that oh. tons of undead egyptian skeleton robots okay. that when Tight. they die they just get right back up because they keep on reanimating hard to kill tons of crazy stuff mm. you can use the katan themselves oh, as units to fight with okay. oh. Pretty cool. Okay. The Necrons are the one of the three major events in 40k. The Horus Heresy, the Fall of the Eldar, and the Awakening of the Necrons okay. are all pretty substantial okay, events. That's, that, that's, that's, like, that's what people kind of remember. Pretty, pretty dang cool. cool going well. on. Here's a good quote three. from a wonderful Dawn of War game. Lucky creatures, as long last you have found the tranquility of death. I was like you once, clinging to life and blind to the truth. I, yeah. When mm. I uncovered the truth, I too shuddered and pale with fear. Mm. Deep in these catacombs, I was remade. Here, my brethren slumbered for eons while the living grew like weed. My Lord knew this day would come. He had plans for us all. We would purge this world once more. So come, poor victims of life. I, we will grant you tranquility in these crypts. Kronos will be a tomb world once more. Necrons are also that pretty me. smug. Trays in the infinite, especially. <laughs> little, little dickhead. But speaking of dickheads, last race. Let's talk the Tau. <laughs> the exact formation of the Tau Empire is not entirely understood. However, a long, long time ago, many thousands of years ago, uh, in the 40k world that is, some Imperial navigation vessels were going around through different areas, and they saw a primitive race, blue people, smacking each other with sticks and stones. They thought, yeah dumb Xenos race who gives a shit and they bailed. Then this giant warp storm occurred right in that major area, unable to be breached. Then once that warp storm 6,000 years what, what, later subsided, hello, <laughs> those little sticks. Well, they decided to actually have no war of any kind and all just unite together under one flag of the Tau Empire. Wait. And now they have gigantic starships and Gundam robots nice. and lasers and rail guns right. and mechs. Yep. And they are here to ruin your day for the greater good. Wait. That is generally the Tau Empire. Uh, they have this kind of feeling of this homogenous group 
all species can go underneath the banner of the greater good. The greater good is their idea of the fundamental increase and help of all. In fact, they are most likely the most like the covenant in Halo where they have the overarching prophets, being the ethereals, who are actually kind of dicks and, and like to pull at strings a little bit. Yeah, yeah, but then you yeah. have all these Most different elders. races directly mm -hmm. underneath them, and they all work together in this big group as this large, foreboding race that tries to spread their weirdly pseudo-religious influence across the galaxy. Mm, the tight. alien is not intrinsically evil. Do not hate him. Pity him his ignorance. Seek to understand Catholics. his differences God. and equate him with his inadequacies. Only then will he accept his place in the greater good. Yeah, greater that good. is generally the Tau. And if you're kind of wondering like what their mainly big shtick is, well, they're all about big robots and mechs. They have laser rifles and rail guns. They got giant mechs with Neat. tons of missile pods and heavy rail rifles and rail I mean, guns they're and super burst advanced. cannons and ion accelerators. They're like orcs that seem to have stuff. less fun, and that is in my opinion. Generally what the Tau's all about, but you're probably hmm. thinking, Bricky, this doesn't sound that evil. This doesn't sound very grim, dark Warhammer. Well, uh, and you'd be right. The Tau Empire really don't have that much of a horrifying, grim, dark style like everybody yeah. else. They're much more younger, new age thing. In fact, they're probably a lot less evil and a lot even better than they are now back in the day because they liked having like that good guy faction. But a lot of us who really liked the, the dark, depressing style of Warhammer didn't really like it that much. So yeah, they're see, like the, the ETs. I'm so tired of all this good happening in my generally depressing world. Yeah. Really from a tabletop perspective, but as you can see from all the visuals I've shown you recently, they don't oh. really fit in the 40K universe very well. Yeah, they lack that super dark, they're dramatic, like very kind of high-gossy yeah. level yeah. the Imperium They're has. a little hopeful of just like, well, life's awful, guys. Let's like give it our best. Like, well, what? Stuff that chaos chaos agents can't do anything that. And the yeah. Necrons and the Eldar have their own specific style as well. The Tau really do look like something out of Gundam. And while it isn't necessarily a bad thing, it does definitely not fit too well. Huh. There's that. <laughs> well, okay, wait. It's also the tabletop <laughs> problem. Uh, in tabletop, Tau are horrible at melee combat, uh -huh. but exceptionally good at ranged combat. So they blast everyone from really, really far away, and they have a million rules to make it so that it's nearly impossible for you to get into melee combat. So it basically just forces you to bottleneck the game into one specific gameplay style, which is gun to gun. And if you're doing gun to gun, they're gonna win every time mm. because they're the Tau, and the Tau are really like damn guns. good at shooting. Okay, so okay. it's one of those things that make the Tau generally rather hated in a lot of different reasons. They, just sound, they uh, sound nice. That, uh, both from style and such. But like this the, is actually one of the things I wanted to end the, the this camp video Let with, your friend is Eddie that Tau the Tau, while come they over. have their issues, him. you should not be discouraged from playing them. I'll make plenty of Tao weeaboo jokes. Of course I will, but it's all generally in good fun. <laughs> Anyone scary. who legitimately doesn't want you to play a faction is an idiot and you shouldn't be giving them the time of day. You pick what you think is cool and what you like. In Warhammer, especially now, factions get better and they get worse. They grow and then they fall. You should only be playing what you think is cool. You like to Tight. look, you like the Let's models. The if thing. you're talking Tighten. tabletop, that is what you should be going for every time is what you think is badass because things change all the time. But the universe of Warhammer has so much going for it. Every faction has something interesting. Every character has a story and there's a million stories to be told. The universe is vast and exciting, and while so it's dark, depressing, be, and horrible, we're making that it to the, the end of his video. Charm. Yeah, and, out of and I can now I've feel told that. You in these two that videos, makes me feel that you weird. Can take away <laughs> is the reason why so many of us are so into this series and why we like it so much. Because with so much variety, such an expansive universe, yeah, and so lot. much that can be done. There's a lot going on there. You can find yourself having a pretty great time. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it has been informative for, to you. Thanks. If you like to see stuff. more of me, yeah. Bricky, that's so you much. Have Twitch, uh, watch TV this guy's stuff. Bricky for my streams. You have my merchandise site in which I He's... was wearing all of my merch, but underneath this because I had to wear this so it wasn't black or white oh, for the green tight. screen, which Man. is a little unfortunate. Oh, but it's fine. Actually, I really, like I actually really dig that. This is an advertisement also, for a shirt. I like to share on my Patreon page. I'm broke. I'm more videos Yeah, I mean, I'm also broke. But then I, that would also be wonderful. <laughs> One so day it would Twitch, make for a good shirt. Patreon, yeah. anything if you want to support, that would um, be fantastic. I'd appreciate it. If not, 
I'm just stoked you got all the way to the end of the video, and that is enough for me. Yeah. So uh, we're gonna be having some more content like this out in the future. Great. Thank you so much for uh, sticking around this long and uh, long being long. with me through this pretty rough time. Uh, that's uh, I think all I got. Also, before I go, let me leave you with my favorite Warhammer quote: "He who scoffs at the power of the lad's gun has never ran through a field of a thousand of them." Huh. Bye bye. All right. Well, what a great. That's what wonderful content. Yeah, that was really. That I mean, that was a lot to sit through, but now I really feel like I get Warhammer. I have a small, une uneven. I've made incremental progress in understanding more of it, but I yeah. still feel like. Whoa, oh, there's, there's a lot, so much. a lot going on there. But I mean, I can understand why in this universe, there's probably an infinite amount of story arcs and fan fictions and possibilities. Yeah, I mean, it's been going on for quite a long time, a yeah. long enough time to have a lot of different branching arcs to it. The we, encounters. We, we should play the we should play the tabletop. Yeah, I, I feel like this is all prepping me to to want to play the table. I feel like I'd be a Tau or Orc player, which would really annoy people. I mean, but, you already you are yeah. dropping the comments what I would be. Yeah. So I just want to point out that it's also one of the most expensive games to play. Okay. Because okay. one miniature yeah. might be ten dollars, a That's, small one, yeah, and I'm you have to get and you have to get like fifty. Yeah. yeah. You have to paint them. You have to buy the paint for them. Yeah. And do then, you, but do you really yeah. need all of that in order I, to play you know, a, like, a successful? I, yeah, okay. Well, I'm is not this playing. Is not that. like a? Is there not a more accessible way to play the game? I didn't go to a Magic games? the Gathering party just because oh, they're like, oh, do you want to buy a duck? I'm like, no. Man, that's to me. That's that's difficult because I want to be a horny god. Yeah. That's that's just it. I mean, if you're gonna put that much money into it, like, there, yeah, gotta, there are larger models that are like five hundred dollars. You can good buy good models. That's, that's wild. Yeah. I mean, I I get. I wasn't mm. actually really thinking while watching all of his videos and then he would show you like the concept art for something and then he would show you the models. I didn't even <laughs> think about like, oh, yeah, that's a lot of money. That's a that lot. goes into that. Wow. Yeah, that's a lot of little stuff. I didn't even consider that. Oh, but yeah, that's a, a fantastic whole se like whole series of videos. Well, I mean, it's two videos, but it's a whole series of just... Here's everything that you need to know about yeah. these important factions and where they lie. I think that's yeah. such a cool place to start. What I would also say is that Warhammer has sort of been passed over by its predecessors. Mm -hmm. You know, like Warcraft, uh, Starcraft, like a d many ha uh, Halo, so much of modern. And you can sort of see it through watching this. Everything has been influenced by Warhammer. Yeah. yeah. So you can, in a lot of ways, see it everywhere. So there is... Yeah. Hundreds of books you can buy and read, which are also relatively expensive. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of video games, dozens of video games out there. All mm -hmm. of a sudden, it's gotten big enough that because of fan projects and such, we're now seeing Netflix making a Warhammer thing. We're seeing uh, Games Workshop themselves mm -hmm. using the guy that made Hell's Reach, and they're now making their own uh, show. And you have like these type of videos that have come out. It's mm -hmm. I look at it as Warhammer has only recently gotten to the point to be able to even surpass the things that it created. Which is, yeah, which is a lot. I feel like all of, throughout all of these videos, or whatever, um, that we've been doing, mm -hmm. I keep seeing things and go, well, it looks very yeah. much like this. That looks very much like that. Yeah. A lot of the, I thought about Gears of War. Yeah. For like the grit and the, uh, I mean, the player models a themselves lot of the too. aesthetics. Um, yeah, the, the aesthetics the of it. The Tau seem like, you know, if they're an older, you know, if they've been around, it's kind of like what E.T. brought in the 80s of like an extraterrestrial idea. Um, and they just found a place for it in this universe. Yeah. Which I think is what's, you know, I, I joke about like it's H.P. Lovecraft, it's Colonial, it's racist. It might have been because it's that old, but it's a universe that keeps building upon itself which makes the lore that much deeper, which makes the reflection to real human history and mythology and storytelling craft that much deeper and effective. Yeah. Um, which is, you know, why you see, like, well, I mean, my, you know, my idea, it's like why it's the root of so much other uh, science fiction out there and now becoming part of the mainstream and a mythology that seems um, impossible to fully grasp ever, I think is also quite, 
exciting and fun and, and worthwhile to uh, really get into at this time. So really appreciate these videos explaining it all. Yeah, I enjoy uh, all of this. I yeah. enjoy learning about Warcraft. But I want to play the tabletop so bad. That's 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 really what yeah. this has led me to. Yeah. But I, I guess I'll have to just become rich and get all the going Eldar all the stuff. Decided. Going, I'm yeah, I'm going Eldar. That's yeah. also my I'm going. Yeah, because what I I don't because I don't know. I've learned a whole lot about myself. I yeah. think through this. <laughs> Is what it is, really. That's Maybe what, I'm just into that sort of masochistic. Well, I, I don't want to be the dark Eldar, but like I, I'll be Eldar. You'll be the Eldar before they, with all of their hedonistic pleasures that they the, the, want to pursue before. No, the the, the the craft Eldar that like went off and did their own thing because okay, they're like you, you all too horny on main guys. Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. Uh, um, maybe I'll be the clowns. The clowns <laughs> yeah. just seems really. I don't like the clowns. I th I think I don't like clowns in general, but I like those clowns. Yeah. Okay. This is you. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe, and check out our other videos. If other. you want us to react to something, please write it in the comments below. below. See you next time. 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 <laughs>